Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. With me, James Shakeshaft. And me, Alistair Beckett King. And Alistair, the long cats are back. The longest of cats have returned. Yes, and they've got another animal-based terror tale for us. Have they brought a feline spectre with them, James? They're feline spooky. Sorry about that, everyone. That's all right. That's okay. Uh, I just thought I would be completely silent and give you time to think about that. <laughs> well, let's uh, move quickly on and enjoy and be terrified <laughs> by the Beast of Belpa and the Surrey Puma. <sighs> Meow. Lawrence, Lindsay, the long cat boys. Hello. And girls, the long cat folk. Folk. What do you have a preferred collective term for cats? yourselves? Could be the long cats. The, the long cats. Oh, the long, long cats. cats. The long cats are still here in. Oh, sorry, I paused as I realised I don't want to do the whole of this podcast in a fake courtroom. <laughs> 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 oh no, that's just too confusing. The long cats are still here in uh, Lawmen HQ, mm. trapped by uh, an, uh, an unwieldy and, and burly door person. Yes. And while you're here, we'd love to squeeze another story out of you. Okay, well, I actually have what I believe to be a positive ID on a real life cryptid. What? What? Yeah. You've seen it? You've seen it yourself? i seen it with my eyes. No. Before you knew about the story as well. Yes. So, so which what? I hope will add more credence to my tale. It's laden with credence now. It has more credence than a Clearwater revival. Jeez Louise. So if I may kick this off, I, I'm from London, but my sister lives... Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Uh, I am northern, technically. Fair enough. Oh, I thought you were booing sister. My sister. <laughs> boo! We hate sister here. Yeah, we're, yeah boo! No, you're on the internet now. Girls boo allowed. for being female. Boo! <laughs> so she decided to get out of London. Free! Yeah. And move. <laughs> it sounds like we're, we're in a pantomime. We've, we've yeah. gone very pantomime. This is more pantomime than I'd intended this early on. Oh, no, it isn't. I was all right. There you go. <laughs> How perfectly did I set that up for you? I even left a lovely little pause for you to jump yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you deserve most of the credit for that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my sister moved to Belper, which is a small mill town in Derbyshire. And the mill, I'm going to tell you this, the mill was founded by a Derbyshire industrialist, the hosier and cotton spinner, Jedediah Strutt. Ooh. Jedediah. Jedediah. That's D's in the Jedediah. middle. Jedediah. I'm just dropping that. Not That's Jebediah. It. No, not Jebediah. Jedediah. I read it twice. Jedediah. <laughs> Jedediah Strutt, a man and a walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. And walk like you own a mill. The Jedediah Strutt. It's like a, a kind of a, another ragtime number, isn't it? <laughs> the Jedediah Strat. Uh, he was a pioneer of a machine known as the Derby Rib, which made rib stockings. He didn't invent it, but he basically bought it off the guy who invented it and, and called it his own. I, I could well imagine how he left that business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> so I feel compelled at this point also to say just quickly that uh, Jedediah Strat had five children whose names were William, Elizabeth, Martha, Joseph and George Benson. Oh. <laughs> hmm. He's the George Benson is the only none of the other Strutt children have two names, just George Benson. Which ben George Benson's, Benson's not a name either, is it? Benson's a surname. Maybe he suspected George wasn't his. Is there a, an actual George Benson in the village who is doing the opposite of the Jedediah Strutt? Yeah. Ooh, here in that just sort of like skulking yeah. along. The Benson skulk. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, Jedediah Strutt and his many children have no bearing on the story. I'm just very aware that I don't have any <laughs> other names really beyond this point. Billy Strutt. Billy Strutt. Nice. So my sister moved to the town of Belper in, I think, about 2010, and I went to visit her. And near the mill founded by Jedediah Strutt is the River Derwent, and there are houses with gardens that back onto the river. And we were walking around near this mill, and we saw an animal in one of these gardens. 
so it was sniffing around the garden, around some some furniture, like a table and chairs, garden furniture. At first, I thought it was a dog because it seemed to be dog shape and size. But then we realized, no, it's a cat. And we were looking at it and going, wow, that's a big old cat. And then there was a sort of a pause where we both let the cogs in our heads turn and, and, and sort of came to the conclusion, wow, that cat is really massive. But it was in the shape of a dog. It was a cat in the shape of a dog. It was a cat. Wow. I would say the size of a dog, and it didn't <clears throat> look quite right. It didn't have the proportions mm. of a normal cat. It was a bit longer, like not stocky like a panther, not like sort of not like big cat proportions, more skinny. I didn't know what a lynx looked like at the time, but Lindsay, you showed me a photo of a lynx, and it, it pretty much was like a lynx. Tiny head. Yeah, small head, rangier and weirder than a normal cat and much bigger. And compared to the chairs, yeah, I would say about the size of a Labrador. If you were, uh, if you're a lynx listening to this and you've got body image issues, this is not going to help. I apologise. We can put a because you're like it looked like a lynx, you know, really disgusting, weird. We didn't, I, well, I've got a very tiny head for my body. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> say that's a bad. So thing. You're, you're allowed to say that. That's, that's the listener might not realise that you taper to a point. I, I zero. I'm like a Christmas tree <laughs> or an iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> So we're looking at this lynx and we start going through a sort of skeptics checklist going, first of all, are we absolutely sure good, good. that this is not a dog? Mm. Uh, and we looked at it for a long time. We, we were seeing it. It was not kind of just a thing that we saw briefly and then it scampered away. We looked at it for about two to three minutes, this thing. So we concluded, no, we know what dogs look like. We have cats in our house. We know what cats move like. This is a cat-like being. And so the next thing we thought, well, are the chairs tiny? Good. That <laughs> was going to be my next question. I can see it in your eyes, James, that mm. you, you were about, you were small chairs. Well, thank you. Thank you for... Little Wendy House playset. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I thought I saw a, a, a sort of Godzilla once, but it was, it was just a toddler with a doll's house. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for you. I, w I, I would love for you to see a Godzilla at some point. <laughs> so... In the wild. In the wild. Not oh, in yeah, a zoo, no, no, it's just no. cruel. They get stressed. It's horrible. Are the chairs tiny? Is that the remarkable thing? Are we in fact looking at a normal cat owned by a community of pixies? Maybe the cat is... Mm. Maybe cat, the cat is not the interesting thing in this. Maybe the pixies are there. Yeah. So all mm. of this crossed our mind when we were talking. Yeah. But did, you, did you check that you weren't nearer to it than you thought you were? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was another thing that we ruled out quite quickly. We had various points of reference. We had sheds, mm -hmm. fences for scale, houses. How long were you staring at this sort of, uh, and this was all going through your head? About two, two to three minutes. We were standing looking at this thing, having this conversation in real time. Um, but unless the houses were an elaborate Disney Imagineering style Trump doy, uh, where the whole thing had been set up purely for the benefit of us looking at this creature, I think they were real houses. And... Yeah, and we were th even thinking, is it just a, like a really big Maine Coon, which is like one of the biggest types of cats? No, it was just too big, and anatomically, it didn't look right. We're definitely going to anatomically get, weird. We're going to get angry letters from lynxes, and I know, but <laughs> <laughs> I can hear the other, what? didn't look right. So we 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 went home, we looked it up, and it turns out there are numerous big cat sightings in Derbyshire. So we weren't going mad. Mm. Am I right in thinking, because you told me, Lawrence, with I think a tone of shame that mm -hmm. you'd written a song about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have written a song about why, why it. The sh why the shame? Why the shame? You're, <laughs> you, you write music. There's what's, what's to be ashamed or embarrassed about? Well, I think what I did in my lyrics there was try and make it better than my kind of slightly sort of, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit big. Oh. Yeah, that's really quite <laughs> big. I, if I'd gone for a more honest account of how it went, but I tried to improve the story further for the purposes of art, and oh, actually that's where I, I went wrong. I actually feel ashamed. I feel ashamed about I that. I think you should have, maybe you should have done more of a punk song, like horrible links, disgusting. Yeah. You know, just try and really emphasise how... <laughs> Stupid little <laughs> hey. <laughs> You've got an excellent punk voice, Lindsay. I like the... It's very uh, Vivian it's from the, the young ones. It's the only style I, I do, really. How yes. old are you when you did this song? I was about, um, I'd say, 21. And my sister, actually, who is a theatre maker, she made a, a local a piece of promenade theatre, children's theatre, called The Beast of Belper, inspired by this very sighting. See, I reckon this is what happens with cryptids. 
artists. <laughs> they build on the story. So they go, <laughs> and all of a sudden, brilliant. this absolute mm. nonsense is disseminated throughout the community. Yeah, what a shame that this disgusting Lynx was seen by two people who cannot contribute to society and have decided to work in the arts. Liars. <laughs> Instead of do something useful, like own a mill. I'm going to improve this disgusting Lynx through art. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I hate that. <laughs> Allow me to write a song. <laughs> it's a bit better. So my, my sister and my brother-in-law, they, they started talking to locals, which is always a good thing to do when you're you know looking for folklore. Mostly men in pubs, which is where you go to find out mm-hmm. this sort of thing. And that's where the locals are. Mm. Yeah. They, they it's literally, th- th- that's what they're called pubs, locals. Yeah. Mm. So the most common explanation deals with Ryber Castle, which is a place in Matlock, built by another industrialist called John Smedley in 1862. It was his private home, and it was known locally as Smedley's Folly. Not as cool as Jedediah Strutt, I'm afraid. <laughs> no. Smedley. That's who he bullied at school, isn't it? Smedley's mm, Grovel. Yeah. Strutt bullied Smedley, <laughs> for sure. Definitely. I'm sorry, Mr. Strutt. There's a problem with the machines. <laughs> <laughs> See, if Strutt had built a big, stupid castle... It would be known as like Strut Towers, and mm. everyone would have a everyone would have nothing but respect for it. Mm-hmm. Strut's you know. big phallus. <laughs> but no, Smedley got Smedley's folly, and his wife lived in Smedley's folly until her death in 1892. After which, the castle became a boys' prep school. Until this became financially unsustainable in the 1930s. Now, the architectural historian John Summerson went to the school in the early 20th century, and although he had a pretty good time, he was not a fan of the architecture of Smedley's Folly, and he described the castle as, and this is a direct quote from him, an object of indecipherable (laughs) (laughs) bastardy, which you may not even be allowed to to say. (laughs) Uh, You think he was looking at a lynx? He's so angry (laughs) with how disgusting it looks. He did call this place a true monster. A true monster. A true so monster. Maybe, maybe this is the beast of Belper. <laughs> the real mm. beast of oh, Belper. That's the true beast. Was the enemies that the castle made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with the coming of World War II, the Ministry of Defence used the site for food storage and following the war, the castle remained unused until the 1960s, at which point it became home to a wildlife park. I mean, you could have just said that, but you had to bring Smedley. Well, I had to bring Smedley in, (laughs) because I wouldn't have got to say an object of indecipherable... (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was going to be that one of the schoolboys had brought it home on a, after a field trip to France or something <laughs> like a flick knife to do with it. yeah a laser pen <laughs> so from the 1960s it was home to a wildlife park containing British and European fauna and at the late 20th century saw increasing criticism of the treatment of animals at the zoo and it closed in 2000 being in, kept in a bastard <laughs> tower ah, b- <laughs> the tower <laughs> yeah that's not that long ago really no Long enough yeah. for maybe a, a small community of big cats to thrive in people's back gardens in small Derbyshire villages. Well, these things do happen. Are you aware of the Peak District Wallabies? The PD Dubs? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the PD Wallies. Um, according to themank.com, uh, this is very, very short, in 1936, a local landowner, Henry Brocklehurst introduced five wallabies to his private zoo collection. Mm. And there's not enough information on the website, and I've deliberately not found out more information because I, 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 love, I love the next sentence. The creatures were deliberately released during World War II, along with three Himalayan yak. <laughs> there's no explanation for why they did it deliberately. But I like the idea that it was to confuse Germans. Had, had Fritz landed. Well, like, oh no, we're in Australia. Damn, <laughs> turn around. Hans, this is some of the worst navigation you have <laughs> back into the U boat with you. <laughs> uh, apparently, they live for quite a while. Against the odds, the wallabies thrived, although I think a series of cold winters might eventually have, uh, have put paid to the wallabies of the Peak District. But they, they did last for a good long while. Oh, good on them. Mm. And there's real, there's, real, there's real photographs of the, the little fellas hopping about. Well, it's more than we can say for the only photographic evidence of the Beast of Belper. Are you referring to the DerbyTelegraph.co.uk video featuring a big cat sighting? I think I probably am, yes. Which is, I think, it's one, it's one of the, the, the main publications dealing with what I think is a very important 
Derbyshire cryptid. Mm. Jack Bryan. Hmm? Not Jack Ryan. Jack Bryan cited a big cat. I don't want to spoil it, James. Uh, I don't think you've seen it. Will you Will you watch this and give us your live reaction? Yes. Remember, the podcast is an audio medium, so what, whatever your eyes are about to see... Mm. The listener won't get that. So, could you could you try and put into words the the the, the horror, the the extraordinary images that you're about to witness? Okay. So, yes, this um, I'm just yeah. Jack Bryan believes he saw a big black cat roaming in the woods near Grindleford Railway. Grindleford. That's a good one. That's a that's good. a good name. <laughs> good Grindleford <laughs> name. Grindle anything. On Tuesday, this is in 2018. Okay. Yeah, this happened ages ago. So uh, the video says starts with the you know it's got a title screen it says can you spot the black panther mm. is this going to be like the basketball one with the gorilla in the background it's not like that it's not exactly a where's wally situation i'm gonna go full screen it's very dramatically shot it starts with his legs walking towards oh yes something yeah he's looking at the ground oh he's he's hiding behind a corner of a building and we're getting a pov he's peeking round. i can see a fence and he, he sort of he sort of panics and, and pulls back as if he's too afraid of what he's seeing. Um, no, I did not spot the Black Panther there. It's just some trees. I can see some trees. He's peeking yep. back round There's again. There's a lot of trees. He peeks round. And what is that? What's that there? What's he zooming in at? A uh, shadow? Oh, it's so there's a little... Leaves. It's a cockapoo. The absence of trees. It says, it's just absolutely... This is where he believes it there. to be. And it is some shadows or or a cockapoo I, i'm ge- you're being generous with cockapoo james it there might have a tail there might video. be a tail it's the 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 build-up gives you so much expectation he peers around the corner and then he just zooms in on a patch of leaves there's nothing there the, well yeah it's a shadow at, be- at, at the at best, at the it's, best a it's a shadow but a shadow of what <laughs> When I was watching it, I thought it might be one of those videos where you watch it for a long time and you zoom in and then suddenly a horrible face jumps in. Dag's face. Mm, that's, that is how unimpressive it is that you your mind invented It looks good like ending. the setup to a jump scare that we were then denied, which I felt a bit annoyed about. I mean, when we talked about Black Shuck, uh, he occasionally appeared invisibly so maybe this is <laughs> oh uh, an invisible beast yeah. yeah is this footage of an invisible panther what's the, there's a there's a saying which is i can't remember to whom it's attributed but that any newspaper headline that's phrased in the form of a question the answer is no <laughs> yes it's uh, someone's is this law, footage of a panther it? prowling through derbyshire woods no. no i'm sure people will be tweeting and emailing and sending postcards in with the name of the person whose law that is um, near Chalbury train station in Oxfordshire, there is a model of a black cat in the woods that some a, a, an hilarious landowner has put there just to startle uh, commuters. I've seen, I've been aware of it for a while, and I've seen, I know when it's coming up, and you can watch people who are gazing out the window give a little bit of a start and a double take. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Really? Mm. Mm. That's a lot more frightening than the video. Yeah, it looks like a cat. It does actually look like a cat. <laughs> how how disgusting would you say its head is compared to a lynx? Oh no, it's not gross. It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not abhorrent. It's not a, a crime against man and god. So it can't be the. Beast I don't think I know what a lynx looks like. I'm I'm going to look up a lynx now and see if they're as bad as you're saying. Oh, just imagine the most disgusting oh. cat. <laughs> like, oh, a cat but Whoa. stretched and wrong. It's a domestic cat's head on a. Big cat's body on a on a sort of yeah. yeah on a cheetah's body. But why has it got? It's got a little beard situation going on. Ugh. A oh no! Beard, the I one like I'm looking at the four that sort of show up in the quad on Wikipedia, the bottom left one. That's the worst one of all. Is the is the worst really one? Really off. I quite like the others. They got some of the of the Thundercat about them. I don't know. They look like Khajiit from the Elder Scrolls games. <laughs> Actually, me. some of the Thundercats had very tiny heads. The blue one. Mm. Panthro. And he, he, yeah, he was a bodybuilder, though, essentially, wasn't he? Mm. They all have tiny heads. Mm. They taper to a point. Mm. I yeah. don't need to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did introduce a Link, so I think, actually, in, uh, in, uh, in later seasons. Well, that probably was what ended Thundercats. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah, man. It just, just too weird. It just occurred to me, if lynxes smell anything like lynx Africa, then we might have on our hands just the worst possible creature. <laughs> I had been thinking this is pretty much, whenever we'd said the word lynx, I had, had to jump from thinking about the deodorant to That's the scent about. they rub mm-hmm. on the curtains, isn't it? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. They spray that on you. That's, yeah. The uncut. Lynx, spray that on spray you. Spray pure Lynx Africa on you. <laughs> <laughs> they said it was it. It's too much for humanity. We were never meant to smell pure Lynx in its <laughs> raw form. Is that a, a very noiseful? What was the word you said? Noisome. 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 A noisome Noise, creature. A great callback to the last week's episode for a week ago, <laughs> and or next week's episode, depending on the episode, the order that we release the episodes. Yes. Well, funny you should say. Uh, that this animal stinks. Oh, are you doing a stink link? I'm doing a stink link. It's a, a stench segue. The are, are you aware of the Surrey Puma? I don't think so. No, not Is at that, all. It sounds like a sports no. team. Yeah, it sounds like it would wear a lot of Lynx Africa. <laughs> the Surrey Puma. <laughs> the Surrey Puma. It was quite a big deal in 1964, in autumn, autumn and winter of 1964. Local newspapers were ablaze with headlines of the Surrey Puma. There was a spate of sightings, and one of them uh, was by a Mr. Blanks. In fact, Farmer Blanks. Did he refuse to give his name? (laughs) I don't know. I guess not. Or was it just really offensive? (laughs) Yeah, he did give his name. That was the problem. (laughs) He was the manager of Bushy Lee's Farm in Crondall in Hampshire, He had a herd of Aberdeen Angus cattle, and he said that he'd seen this puma many times. It had attacked his animals. It had startled his cattle. Uh, Yeah. On the the 18th of August... (laughs) (laughs) Just trying to put a question mark, an inflection in that moo. The the Tim the Toolman Taylor noise is that, that is, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) That's how they got it. They startled a cow. (laughs) His cattle broke out of their field, and when it was when they were rounded up, it was found that a four hundred weight steer was missing. Sorry, this is again from Mystery Animals of Britain and Ireland. And this this four hundred weight steer was discovered in nearby woods, bitten and mauled about the flanks, shoulders, and legs in a pool of blood. And a, and unsurprisingly, a vet was called in, and he made the. In- and what did she say? <laughs> It was a he. He made the interesting comment. I cannot uh, operate on this. <laughs> this hundred weight steer. This steer. This is steer my, is my son. son. I was. I was pretend. I realized. I was pretending that you'd said Yvette, the woman's name, <laughs> but then I realized that you you had misunderstood me. Yvette was called in. <laughs> anyway. Ah, oh, that's lovely. So she. So she was the the cow's mum, James. In this vet's opinion, the injuries could not have been caused by any animal found in this country. All right, I think that goes beyond the pronouncements that vets usually make. Yeah. Yeah, do they teach that in vet school? This is the mauling <laughs> of, <laughs> of the mauling animal. <laughs> <laughs> animal. So Farmer Blanks uh, said he'd seen the puma clearly on four occasions and in the distance several times. He said it was about the size of an Alsatian dog, a light sandy colour with a cat's head and a long tail. The creature made unnerving yowling cries and brought with it a smell like ammonia so strong it was almost suffocating ammonia is just pissy smell isn't it yeah 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 that's pee pee yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it is the farmer blanks is trying to be polite mm. pee pee smell <laughs> and when mr blanks would unleash his hounds when the animals were around they were terrified of it and would not even attempt to follow the scent it's very rare that a dog smells something horrible and goes oh no thank you <laughs> not yeah. for me oh, oh, oh that's awful Oh no no that's going too far fox corpse straight <laughs> 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 in there <laughs> mm, yeah yeah but oh oh no i mean i may be a dog but that that really yeah. reeks this mm. this slight smell of i'm not i'm not <laughs> down with that the, so uh, reports of this beast continued a reporter for the farnham herald uh, heard a loud screech and saw a large sandy coloured beast with a cat like head, long tail, and laid back ears. Ooh. I guess that means like well, pressed it onto its head rather than, yeah. Cool Britannia. Lay, you got some laid back ears there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it scrambled up the bank uh, at the roadside. Animals described as a big cat, puma, or lioness were seen at Hale Common in Ushut. 
and even crossing Farnham Bypass on a Saturday lunchtime. However, the the affair of the Crondle Cougar started to feel like an anticlimax. The affair <laughs> of the Crondle Cougar is just a title that has maybe changed my favourite Sherlock Holmes story. That one. <laughs> Uh, on the 7th of September, PC Bill Cooper, which I misread as PC Bill Copper, which is the <laughs> ultimate policeman name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God Alming Police Station. Again, that's a place rather than an exclamation. He received a telephone call from Mr. Roy Pettit. You, you don't want to pet it. That's, that's terrible advice. Roy Pettit, who was a trainer at the racing stables... And they, and they'd found a trail of unusual paw prints on some sand that was used for horses. I don't know. And several experts were shown photographs. And officials at London Zoo said the prints had been made by a puma, as did local taxidermist Mr. Percy Mountray, who specialised in big cats. So there's a taxidermist called Mr. Mount something. Yep. <laughs> Mr. Mountry, <laughs> Bill Cooper. His full name was Sawdust Stuffin Mountry. This is a, the most nominative determinism. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pettit. <laughs> and Ian notices things, was on hand, and he spotted very number of clothes. We've got a vet called Yvette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a lot. There was also. It was spotted by a long distance lorry driver called David Back. Who saw it at Shooter's Hill Police Station? Yeah, well. Okay, so it was seen again by a man picking blackberries. Doesn't say their name. <laughs> Are you telling me that's no. not his name? <laughs> <laughs> a man picking blackberries. <laughs> it was an Iman uh, <laughs> picking blackberries near the water tower at Munstead had seen a very large cat-like animal on the other side of the bushes. The animal spat at him and he fled. Oh, no, it does say his name. is Mr George Wisdom. And he said, mm. uh, The animal was about five feet long, excluding the tail, three feet high with short, stocky legs and large paws. It was a dirty brownish gold colour with a dark stripe down its back and tail. The head seemed small in relation to the body. Mr. Wisdom had given a remarkably accurate description of a puma. Mm, sounds like a real... I, I, normally I'm a sceptic, but I think this is a real thing. The two incidents together suggested a large, possibly dangerous wild animal was at large, causing the police to issue a public warning to this effect. So began the hunt for the Surrey puma. That's pretty compelling. It lasted for three years. So the sightings are only for a couple of months, and then they kept hunting for three years. <laughs> they kept, well, it's, sightings continued through 65. Mr. Robert Ware, a forest ranger, saw the puma at a distance. <laughs> Come on. Uh, in uh, Hurtwood Common. I'm just looking for d puns now in the, in the actual names. <laughs> OK, do you think it was just... You know, innocent blackberry pickers and forest rangers that saw it, no. On the 16th of October 1965, the Honourable Philippa Thessig Thessiger, Thessiger? I'm, I'm guessing that is not how their name is pronounced because they're posh and it's written in using letters. Uh, Thessiger, daughter of Viscount Chelmsford, went to feed her horses near the family home of Chiddingfold Court. And she found one of the horses at the gate shaking with fear and another hiding in a corner of the field. I don't know how you can tell a horse is hiding <laughs> in a, when they're in the field. Yeah. Behind a blade of grass. Just sort of ducking down behind a tuft. But both the horses had sadly been injured and she saw a puma crouching in the grass only 20 feet away. She made a noise and the animal ran off. The following night... Just a, just a posh noise and the bull. puma recognised mm. rank. The following night, Lady Philippa entered one of the sheds where bales of hay were stacked. The puma launched itself from the hay, went right over her head as she ducked and dashed into the night. And then we get a photo of it. What? Yes. In August of the following year, which is, I'm guessing, 1966, the ex-police photographer... Ian Pert. <laughs> um, Page three photographer. <laughs> I don't know why I'm enjoying that, but I am. Ian Pert was mounting a dawn vigil with an assistant near Warplesden after there'd been a sighting. <laughs> Sorry, he was mounting dawn vigil. 
<laughs> Ten days later, their patience was rewarded, as Mr. Pert described. It was between 5.45 and 6 in the morning. I was about 35 yards away from the animal, which was sandy coloured, about three feet long plus tail, and about two feet high. It seemed to have a small head in proportion to the rest of its body. It was muscular, with a thick and very hefty tail and very sleek. Its face was very cat-like. As soon as the camera clicked, the animal was away in a flash. That was my impression of Ian Pert there. It was very good, yeah, yeah. It was like he was in the room. Dr. Ed... (laughs) Oh, no. Okay. (laughs) You don't normally react before you say the name. The head keeper at Chesington Zoo, Dr. Edward Orbell, (laughs) which I think is a human. (laughs) (laughs) Orbell. (laughs) He chimed in. Um... (laughs) <laughs> from from 35 yards, this animal is too big to be an ordinary cat. Its size is more that of a female puma. And I've got this picture here. It's slightly more, it's slightly better than the Derbyshire Shadow. But, I mean, I'm holding it out to the camera now. That is, that's, 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 a, that's, that's a cat, mate. That is it's a, cat. a photograph of a cat. Oh, I'm convinced. It's- there's not even a pound coin for scale. It looks like it's in front of a huge keyboard. It's <laughs> not there, is it? No one's it's getting... the smallest cat in the world. It's on a piano, on one piano key. Incredibly tiny cat. That's just a cat, James. They haven't even got it next to some lawn furniture. <laughs> some toy lawn furniture, no. That is just That's a cat. That's rubbish. That is you it. built that up so much. I know. Ah. Oh. I feel like the, a string of people from Carry On films have just taken me for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> They've ridden you a rough shot. Yeah. yeah, they sure have. The thing is, though, I think, you know, photos always look a bit shit, don't they? So even if you did take a photo of Godzilla or something, it'd probably just look like a monitor lizard or something. You'd take it and you'd, you'd be forever <laughs> saying to people, wow, yeah, it was more yeah. impressive in the flow. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you had to be there. These phone cameras, they don't really, they never really get it the way you want. Who has not taken a picture of the moon and been disappointed? Come on. I mean, come on. And when it looked like exactly like a house cat. <laughs> I don't think you realise how far away the moon is. You need to put a pound coin by the moon for scale. Actually, um, you you have a, you take photographs through telescopes, don't you? Yeah, I take I take pretty good pictures of the moon, actually. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't want to say anything. You didn't want to toot your horn. No, no, no. But, I would um, never. <laughs> I tooted it. What's your surname? <laughs> the moon's not moving, though, so that helps. I mean, it moves a bit. It does move a bit, but it moves pretty slowly. Compared to a puma. Uh, a puma or a very ordinary cat. That's in that particular photo. <laughs> I'm glad I brought that up, and that's why my name is Lionel Horn Tutor. <laughs> <laughs> but why didn't you take a picture of the cat? I suppose was it 2010? Did, did we have phone cameras in those days? We, I can't remember. We had. I mean, I think I had a phone that had a camera of sorts, but it wouldn't. It would have been even worse than the the Derbyshire Shadow. This was definitely pre <laughs> pre iPhone ownership. The, the on my Derbyshire book. Shadow is too cool a name it's, for a photograph of nothing. It's, it's better than the Beast of Belper, the Derbyshire Shadow. <laughs> it's really good. It's good. Well, just to back up my um my my guys in this book, uh, there is a story in this book from a farmer Ted Noble in Glen Canick in Venetshire who captured. He captured a female puma. Ah. Wow. Now that's a puma. But it, it's, it's directly behind a fence. And that fence might be in a field, but it also might be in a zoo. Don't you think? That's a that very could, good point. But t- you, are you dis- sorry, are you disbelieving Ted Noble? <laughs> <laughs> can, can I just say, I've seen like seven or eight pictures of wallabies in the Peak District. There's definitely wallabies. Or they could be kangaroos slightly further away. I don't know. How would you know? There's no lawn furniture There's available. No way of knowing. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to lob a table at them, but they're too quick for me. Bounded away. Well, yeah, there are. I mean, there are much. There are further reports of Derbyshire big cats as recently as yeah, 2016 and 2018. I've got a couple of them here. This is from the Derbyshire Times. Members of the public report seeing big cats as large or larger than big dogs, often using terms such as lynx, puma, jaguar, black leopard, or panther. So. September 20th, 2016, somebody reported, there's a dangerous cat, it's got a much bigger tail, and it's a lot bigger and taller. 
than a cat, presumably, is the implication. It looks like a small panther. It was laid 15 yards away from me, and it was laid flat like it was stalking. It's a young animal, but is still growing. <laughs> Which is oh, a wow. weird, mm. weird mm. turn of phrase. Oh, give him a break. He's still growing. As if it was actually getting larger in front of the person's it eyes. Would, would be quite frightening if that was going on. It's about the size of a dog. The face looks like a cat's, but much bigger. It's most definitely not a native animal. So that was 2016. I know when people say something is the size of a dog, we all kind of get it, right? But of all the animals, dog is one of the ones that has the biggest gamut of sizes that you could imagine. It goes all the way from Irish wolfhound down to the, the toy chihuahua. I had the decency to specify Labrador. You did, and I appreciated that. Thank you. We respect that. And then that. you really coated off Lynx's. To such a degree that we're going to have to put a disclaimer on this episode to the Lynx community. Labrador's just not scary, though. You compare things to a Labrador. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's, it's, you're imbuing it with friendliness. It removes the gravitas from any cryptid that you could compare <laughs> it was to like a Labrador. A Labrador. Oh. <laughs> Let's hit him with our first category. Let's knock him out of this easy chair. All right. So, category number one. Names. Boom. It's five out of five. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next category, please. Yeah. I don't, it's a while since we've had so many silly names. Mr. Category Scorer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's five out of five. I, I don't even want to negotiate. There, uh, sorry, can I just say, there was one other, there was another witness, Mr. Ernest Jellett. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just me opening a page at random. <laughs> Is this a real book? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wrote it, and it's just a list of names, silly names. Um, the man just made up a list of odd names and then strung it together with stories <laughs> as plausible a fashion as he could. Yeah, a great, great opening category, good choice, mm, five out of five. Solid. Which sadly brings us to the Danny DeVito to its Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm. the supernatural category. Well, I like Danny DeVito. Yeah, we all love Danny DeVito. More, I like Danny DeVito more than I like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's true. But there wasn't a lot of Danny DeVito in this particular story. Yeah, yeah, it was hardly Danny DeVito at all. Danny DeVito's a union man, so I, I like uh, the I like him better. But uh, yeah, well, I, honestly, I think they're real cats. I think they're real big cats that have escaped. I think so too. Captivity, yeah, and bitten some cows. I believe it. I, this is the first time I've been persuaded they don't have glowing eyes. They don't have sparks coming out of anywhere. They all, they almost all have heads, even if that is weird. They have nostrils, but they're attached to a nose. So yeah. Same, yeah. A it? consistent yeah. number of eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just real animals, James. It's just real. It is true. I'm sorry to inform the listener. Some things happen, and this is one of them. So I still have not brought you a positive ID of a cryptid. I've just brought you a positive ID of a piece of wildlife. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, a one for supernatural <sighs> because I I am a believer in big cat theory. Even one, I think, is pushing it. I mean, what's the one for? <laughs> like, the, they like, never. Uh, that was a picture of a cat. Does it even deserve one? Yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's possible. Yeah, it's, it was a pity one, if I'm being honest. But but it's possible that what you saw was the ghost of a cat that was released. Oh, okay. 18 years so earlier. So if I, if I sort of add that little... Allegedly. Sort of, yeah, a, alleged... Alleged, allegedly. Shyamalan plot twist of it being a ghost. Yeah. Will that bump up the Supernatural score? N no, that that one was assuming... Oh, okay. Assuming that it was a ghost. <laughs> it's inbuilt already, okay. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'd already taken that into yeah, account when, when scoring. Not my first rodeo. Although, actually, I've never been to a rodeo, so... No, I mean, it's a, your first rodeo will be your first rodeo. yeah. Very what a day so. that will when I'm there. Mm. This is my first rodeo, I would say. Where's the best place to sit see the horsies? <laughs> Next category is uh, with apologies to the Lynx community. Oh, that's the category. Yes. Yeah, we need to we need to get get the iPhone notes app out and start writing. Get tearfully into your YouTube apology. This has been appalling. Yeah. Yes. The Link I'm sorry, Lynx community, but you do look weird. Oh, no, I've done it badly, haven't I? I've done it wrong. That's I've a, done it all a, wrong. What Some of our listeners might have small That's heads. a real YouTuber's apology you just did there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if you felt like you were a disgusting cat. <laughs> a really weird head and just just wrong limbs. Do better, Lynxes. <laughs> just turn <laughs> it around. <laughs> it's their fault for their silly, tiny little heads. 
<laughs> I like them. I like what they've done with their beards. Yeah, actually, to be fair, James, you were the least critical of lynxes when we finally saw what a lynx actually looks like. Yeah, you would. Uh, uh, we've actually had to cut you out. Cut out you throwing up. <laughs> off mic. I hated it. I hated what I Do saw. Do you think the beard is to elongate the face? It's got a double beard, like like Jesus has in paintings. It's got a beard going into two prongs. One of them. What Jesus has forked in beard. Nature? Yeah. Suggesting the lynx is dual nature. Maybe it's because they're Ooh. thinking a lot. They're, so they've got their sort of they're sort of resting their chin on their little yeah, paw. Yeah, you think it's a mulling think. crevice mm. caused by stroking their chin. Or maybe they're just dis- in disbelief of everyone in the 90s, in a 90s school playground going, do chinny reckon. With the double beard, it could do a double chinny reckon. Oh, it a could, double beard. It could be the most sceptical cat this Yet. is why no one likes lynxes. Yeah, everyone hates your lynxes. What was the category? Uh, with apologies <laughs> to the lynx community. <laughs> no, I'm not feeling apologising to now. No, uh, two. Oh. Uh, two, because, you know, they, they ask for it really, don't they? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I switched sides, actually. I started off <laughs> really defending their little heads, because I've got one. Mm. And I just turned on them because it was the it was the majority vote. Uh, mob mentality. Wow, that was wow. Oh. Oh, that's like Lord of the Flies. What a salutary lesson we've all learned. What's the final category? It's don't look for it. It's not there, James. It's not there. I've it's seen not, the video. We've seen that video. We looked it's, at that video. It's the gap between some leaves. Mm. That's all it is. It's a gap. You're showing me a gap. It's the jazz of encrypted videos. It's about the lynxes you don't photograph. Mm, that's right. Mm. You literally saw it though, Lawrence. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, but we only have my word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could this be just an, el- an elaborate yarn? Do you think that little cat that I showed, that I spent ages building up to the picture of, do you think that little cat <laughs> could have taken down a 400 weight steer? I mean, I, I'll be honest, at this point, I don't know what 400 weight means. No. But it sounds like a lot. I did look it up, and it isn't watts. It isn't 400 weights. It's like, it's a, it's a, it's a, 100 weight is a number that does not correspond to 100. Oh. Oh. I hate non-metric measurements. They're so confusing. I noticed as well that the person who took a picture of the terrifying puma didn't also take a picture of the 400 weight steer. So we have only, <laughs> if there had been a picture of the 400 weight steer, we might have seen a slightly less impressive animal. So it's like a cat mm. taking down a corgi or something. Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I, I, I'm torn now because on the one hand, I really don't think it was there in the video, but <laughs> like a, like a very small cow has been ripped apart by an average house cat. Um, I really don't think it was there. But on the other hand, I do believe in the big cat theory now. ABC. Yeah, the uh, the I don't believe that they're aliens, but that just means that they're not local. They are they're re- real big cats. They're, they're aliens like Stin like Sting was an alien. Also oh, like alien in the sense of foreign. Aliens do take cows from fields a lot though, don't they? Yeah. They take their anuses weirdly. Yeah. I thought that was so human. Does sting. So to Sting. <laughs> yeah, in uh, in the film Dune when he was an alien. What, he took a cow's anus. <laughs> oh, no. they, cut it, they cut it out D- David Lynch insisted on it oh. not in the books maybe aliens shrunk the cow and that's why it's so small mm. oh. well there's there's a lot of mystery mystery abounds we'll never really know I'm going to say it's it's four out of five it, it should have been five out of five but as for the, the final point don't look for it James it's ah, not there ah, he's done me he's done me he's done mm-hmm. me He's given me a hundred weight of points, of the, yeah. which is a random number. Yeah, it could be any amount of cow. It's a good thing we're not farmers. We'd constantly be being taken for a ride, and not in a fun way, on a small cow. <laughs> like at a rodeo, but, like at our first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these horses are a lot smaller than they sounded when I bought them. <laughs> well, thank you very much, the long cats. Thank you, Long Cats. Would you like to get a, a plug in for your many podcasts? Yes, thank you. Uh, so you can go to our website, which is longcatmedia.com, where you will find info about all of our many fiction podcasts, which include Mockery Manor, which features the voice of Mr. Alistair Beckett King, and also The Ballad of Anne and Mary, which is a pirate musical, Madame Magenta. Not in that one. No. So, in fact, just. The listener will want to know which ones I'm not in. So we'll in. just stop there, in fact, because, in fact, that's the only one that you're in. <laughs> You've got several others that I'm not in. This is outrageous. I'm horrified and angry. 
to discover that. Well, thank you very much for joining us. You may you may leave Lawmen HQ. Uh, the doors are now clear. Yeah, we moved the big big person out the way. Remember whoever that was at the door. Thank you so much for having us. That, that big person, when you get nearer, actually a lot smaller than they seem. Yeah. They told us they were a hundred weight and we thought that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, weren't the long cats lovely? They were lovely. Uh, they were as lovely as they are long, James. Which is very. And how can people hear more of them, apart from by listening to the previous episode that they were also in? Or their many podcasts at Long Cat Media. Well, they could hop along to patreon.com forward slash lawman pod. Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of extras, aren't there? Uh, and join oh, us. There, James. Add free feed, <gasps> bonus episodes, like 100, maybe not 100, maybe 75. Um tons of bonus episodes and access to the law folk discord the discord yes to chat with like-minded law folk wow wow i can't that noise that's between a, or not the noise that's between a wow and a that you get. You know that noise. You're trying to do the sexy one, but you keep hissing. And I think once you've reached the point of saliva, I don't think it's a, a sexy one. It's not meant to be. It's meant to be scary. You're not trying to go, meow. It is scary. Yeah, but it's that one that's in between the meow and a hiss. I don't know. That noise. Imagine that. Yeah.